The Fantastic Beasts crew is back with the third installment in their five installment series here with Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. This one sees the removal of Johnny Depp and the insertion of Mads Mikkelsen as Grindelwald. I'm going to let you know what I thought about this installment next. Wizarding it world fans it's the outlaw john roca here with my non-spoiler review for fantastic beasts the secrets of dumbledore the third installment in this franchise and the much anticipated one after wb took a little bit of a step back here and essentially did a soft reboot of this franchise bringing in steve close cloves rather to help with uh, jk rowling on the screenplay removing Johnny Depp and bringing in Mads Mikkelsen to take his place and essentially readjusting some of the storylines, readjusting some of the plot points from the first two movies uh, to see what they can do here uh, to bring about a little more energy and a little more excitement about the franchise yet again. And I'll get into it in just a second, but first I want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so you see when we're dropping all the content we do here on the Outlaw Nation channel. Head on over to Twitch. Follow me there as well. The Outlaw Nation, all one word on Twitch. Been having some fun watch-alongs on Twitch, and a lot of you been joining me, which I really, really appreciate. So come and follow and subscribe to me there as well. All right, let's get into this review for The Secrets of Dumbledore. All right, right off the bat, I'm sure a lot of you are asking two questions. One, is it better than the second installment? Yes. Do they lean into the gay love storyline here between uh, Grindelwald and Dumbledore? Yes. So if those were your two concerns, they are both uh, appeased by the end of the movie. Is it, uh, you know, overall a great movie that belongs in the pantheon of the great, essentially, Wizarding World movies? No. Is it a good movie? Yes. It's much better than the second installment. And that's really a, a, a low bar that it had to cross but it crossed it high enough for me to be back invested in these characters. Uh, you're asking, okay, what energy does Mads Mikkelsen bring it to the film? He brings a really subtle, nefariously evil, Nazi-esque vibe to his approach. So I liked his energy. I like Mads Mikkelsen part of being part of this movie. Him and uh, Jude Law have some great chemistry. And of course, the second part of what you're asking about, yes, do they mention the romance? Yes. And we go into the past. We go into the double door past, which is really interesting. A lot of you know the story here with his brother and with his sister and with his mom all of that it gets explored again this is a non-spoiler review i'm not going to explain too much about it we also see where credence ezra miller's character as we saw the pressures of grindelwald and how he was corrupting him since the first two movies what's going to come to bear with him what stronger purpose is he going to have or discover here newt's commander i will say this eddie redmayne brings the, the normal charm and the normal joy of newt's commander to the movie but it seems clear to me that they are moving a little bit away from newt being the main central part of things and maybe this is kind of a wrap-up of a certain storyline and then newt's going to take the lead again but this was very much dumbledore and grindelwald's movie this is not newt's commander's movie he is one of the team that Dumbledore has assembled to go after Grindelwald. And there are some mini adventures that Newt goes on, but this is very much a Dumbledore versus Grindelwald movie. And another person who hasn't been seen much in the trailers or in the posters, and it's been talked about, is Catherine Waterston's Tina Goldstein. And yes, she is barely in the movie, but she is essentially replaced by Jessica Williams' new character, Eulalie Hicks. She comes in, she's got a little bit of that 1930s speech pattern that you saw, like Jennifer Jason Lee doing Hudsucker Proxy, and it works. It really works. I think Jessica does a fantastic job. It's nice to see her energy in the movie and her back and forth with everybody. We do have uh, Dan Fogler back as Jacob Kowalski. Great to see Dan Fogler stepping back into Kowalski's shoes. And Kowalski has more to do with this movie. Dan Fogler brings such a great energy to the uh, franchise. So much fun to see him bringing his unique uh, style of comedy. You can't help but care about the guy. You can't help but like the guy. He brings such a vulnerability and a sweetness and a charm and a warmth to his portrayal of Kowalski uh, that when things start to happen in the movie, you really are brought along with, with his story. You really brought along with him through the story here. Yes, Alison Sudol is back as Queenie as well. She's got an interesting part to play in all of this. And I loved seeing Victoria Yates as Bunty. Bunty gets a lot more to do in this movie, which is great to see as well. And Callum Turner is back for those of you who got a little bit of, um, uh, how can I say this? A little bit of an attraction for Callum Turner. You can certainly enjoy him in the movie. Basic plot line is you're just trying to stop him 
from uh, Grindelwald from taking over the Wizarding World. There are things that limit Dumbledore from fighting him. That becomes the thing that they talk about. Uh, and another part of this movie that I really enjoy are the beasts. We get to enjoy some nice new beasts that I've never seen before, including a beast. I'm not going to give anything away. A beast that chooses the leaders of the Wizarding World. I had no idea about that. So very interesting to see, see that being explored in some unique and interesting ways that all these characters kind of play into, or all the beasts rather, play into the film. It's fun to explore. Now, some of the things that I didn't like, although Matt Mickelson brings a nice energy to Fantastic Beasts, I will say this, I don't 100% enjoy how they played his character out. Remember, the way Johnny Depp played him is this is a angry from the gut kind of villain and mads is a little more above it all a little more proper and i was just surprised at how toothless he was at times in his villainy and that was really interesting and i was wondering if maybe wb made that decision because they wanted to go with a softer villain that could be a little more uh connectable for children to kind of not feel afraid about i don't know but he's a bit toothless throughout the movie with some of the tactics and some of the moves that he's making and some of the things that happen right under his nose that he doesn't react to or doesn't sense or doesn't see. I mean, we're supposed to believe that Grindelwald is this incredibly knowledgeable, brilliant, um, uh, evil wizard. I would imagine he would be able to you know, be aware of his surroundings the whole time, and he's really not. So it was a little surprising uh, to see that. Also, the Kowalski and Queenie uh, storyline that gets uh, explored more in the movie uh, I it feel like it was handled clumsily and a bit awkwardly, even though there's some sweet moments here from Kowalski. Uh, I felt like the way they kind of navigated this storyline throughout the movie without giving anything away was kind of a bit, mm, didn't feel believable and, and felt a little awkward as well. Also, the removal of Tina was really a curious decision. They kind of pawned it off as uh, she's been moved up and therefore she doesn't have time for Newt. And that was really weird. Not that it doesn't happen. Certainly it happens in real life, but it just felt really weird as, as opposed to um, dwelled upon a little bit more and explored a little bit more, just kind of handed us to us. And then we just go and we just have to deal with it. And so I'm not a hundred percent down with that um, overall. And there are some plot points. There are some storylines here that things happen because they have to happen rather than they happen organically and the film has constructed them to happen in a way that makes sense with the events that are going on. I think that's the biggest criticism that I have here is they uh, write out this script as if we've got to get to this spot in order for this other thing to happen. So let's just get to this spot uh, however we can. Uh, not too much creativity, not too much interesting uh, uh, setups, just get them there. And then we can go to the next thing. So to me, it felt a little bit like they had to accomplish some goals here in this movie and they didn't, they knew they didn't have the uh, um, history or the background in the last two films in order to construct those moments uh, happening and make them believable and understandable. Uh, so they just went ahead and barreled to those moments anyway, just assume the audience would go along with it and kept going. And so for me, I thought some of those moments really just didn't work. Didn't have the emotional oomph that you wanted them to have and the great Wizarding World movies have, and this one just didn't have it. So overall, those are my criticisms for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. And overall, I give this film 3.5 cowboy hats out of five cowboy hats. I think, as I said, it's better than the second film, so I'm glad to feel that way. I enjoy uh, some of the time we spend with these characters. I enjoy fleshing out the world a little bit more. I caught myself smiling, laughing in certain moments. Certainly some time with the beasts also was a lot of fun. David Yates does a fantastic job directing the movie. Where it falls apart for me are the plot lines a little bit, are the uh, storylines and the convenient nature of some of these plot points that allow them to get to this overall thing. And maybe this is a matter of, you know, as we said, as I said earlier in this review, it's a matter of them course correcting. And in course correcting, they just want to use this film to get people back uh, into trusting this franchise and back into liking these characters. And so they're just fixing some things here to kind of get rid of some storylines or to kind of wrap up some storylines and open the door for some new storylines to come in over the next two films. And maybe we're going to get an even better end to the franchise than we did the beginning. And that's a rare thing in franchises. So that's a positive overall. Plus, I like the strong... Um, statement they make about fascism and about uh, the idea of having an authoritarian regime trying to control uh, people, trying to control um, countries, trying to control organizations or wizarding worlds, uh, and the nefarious means they use to do it. 
Uh, and I think it's a statement that's very topical in our times and one that is well uh, should be well received by the audience overall. And looking at my tweet on this, this is what I had to say about it. Fantastic Beasts and Secrets of Dumbledore is a much better film than the previous one with some sweet, funny, and touching moments of magic. But this franchise's issue with scattered story elements, surface-level characters, and unearned motivations seems to be its destiny, sadly. For those asking, yes, Mads Mikkelsen is damn good as Grindelwald. He is cocky, scary, and unsettling with piercing eyes that demand allegiance as he assumes a Trumpian role in the film. Jude Law brings the smooth thing that he does best, and Eddie Redmayne wins you over again. So those are my overall thoughts there in tweet form for anybody who wanted to go and look it up there on Twitter. All right, well, thanks so much for watching this review. Appreciate it madly. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button so you see when we're dropping all the content we do here on the Outlaw Nation channel. And please leave a comment down below as well and a like. Likes and comments elevate the visibility of everything we do here on the Outlaw Nation channel and share it on your social media. Please share this on your social media. Put that hashtag, the Outlaw Nation, on your sharing and maybe people will come over to the channel and subscribe as well, as I just told you to do a few seconds ago. And if you're on Twitch, come and follow me there, the Outlaw Nation, all one word on Twitch. Been doing a lot of stuff there. Going to be doing even more stuff there on Twitch. So come and hang out with us, including the John and Wendy show on Fridays at 3 p.m. PT and at the Outlaw Nation. Oh, sorry. And at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And don't forget my podcast, the Top 10, the Cinephiles, and the Geek Buddies. All right, y'all take care of yourself. Go off to a wizarding world of magic and have some fun seeing Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore this weekend. Take care until then. The world as we know it is coming undone. If we're to defeat him, you'll have to trust me. Mr. Kowalski, we need you. I said I want an out, and I want out. Ah! You do know I'm a witch, right?